Good afternoon. I am from the Philippines and thank you for waiting for my presentation. I'm really sorry that I wasn't able to come, but I would like to share what I have from the Philippines. I will be pre presenting my paper, Memories and Aspirations, Key to Community Cultural Management and Conservation. The community is Binaliw. It is a small urban community of Cebu City. Cebu City is, has about 85 barangays, and my area of study belongs to the northern group of upland communities. It is an agricultural community situated 17 kilometers from the city. It is a very small land area, about 750 hectares. It is subdivided into different uh, communities, sub-communities, we call it situs in the Philippines. It has a total population of 3,225 with, household, with households of 60, 620 and a total number of families of 801. The barangay, because it's very small, has only about 3.4 million income. This, this is estimated from 2015 data. Now, I would like to show the map of the barangay. You have the one in circle, for example, you have the one in white is one of the highest elevation of the barangay. The one with orange is the second highest elevation. And to move to the other side, we have the yellow green, which is Campo, is another highest elevation, more or less similar with Sichuluton. And Campo is also higher. And the, other, the rest are in the mid elevations. So generally the barangay is about seven situs. And each of the situ is actually subdivided into different sub-communities. Now, what is the current situation of Barangay Binaleo to begin with? Binali community has resources, which is actually typical to small communities. It is agricultural. It is known, it was known to have rich agricultural farmlands. It is quite mountainous, but currently it has limited, uh, people have limited utilization of land for production or fruits, maize, and vegetables. People domesticate animals, cows, goats, pigs, and chickens. People also have rivers and creeks, which are sources of water, sometimes sources of gold and gravel and sands and rocks. It has relative abundance of trees, bamboos, fruits, mangoes. The local fruit, we call it sariguelis, sambag, jackfruits, coconuts, and others. And others are becoming actually extinct. Now, the major activity of the community is cutting of trees, which are actually largely extractive and destructive. These are used for fuel woods, charcoal, lumber, and we call it in our terms, sognod, uling, and raha. Currently, the community has a livelihood. Uh, they, uh, it's quite mixed. We have upland farming, making a barbecue stick from bamboo, gold panning, sari sari store, construction work, driving, public private employment, quarrying, and other, and other forms which are actually illegal. So, in general, if we are going to look at them, the health and sanitation also is quite not that good. Same with other communities, there is uh, there are like common common sicknesses: cough, fever, colds, anemia, malnutrition, and others. There is no good sanitation of the area. It has lack of toilets, inappropriate garbage disposal, and unsafe drinking water. Now, my study actually tackles on the knowledge of the community, granting the fact that people have their memories, and people can recall, and people can feel what, and retain every activities which are actually meaningful in their lives. Their attachment to the cultural landscapes and the environment is quite strong, specifically in upland communities. So my method, which is actually trying to extract the memories of people is, for me is quite 
reliable in a sense, considering that people retain their memories, specifically if, if they're attached to their landscape. Now, basically, I would like to begin with the, my position on my basic arguments that every environmental landscape within a small community is considered a cultural landscape. Activities which are actually embedded within the natural landscape are considered are cultural in context. Therefore, for me in this upland community, every environmental dimension in the community is actually cultural. Now, to begin with, I ask the community to reconsider looking at the knowledge of the environment in the past. Now, for the community, the physical environment is quite that is striking in their memory, considering that they are actually embedded up to the present. For them, the hilly and mountainous terrains in the past has abundant resources. People recalled on the diversity of the varieties of trees, plants, and bird species. People also identify more hardwood present in the community with abundant palm trees and bamboos, which are still currently, I think, the bamboos and trees are quite abundant, except for the hardwood. People recall fresh air, clean river systems, streams with the species that thrive, and water was sufficient as far as the community is concerned. Soil was considered fertile, and there was absence of air and water pollution. Now, what are these associated practices, or are there associated practices in relation to the kind of observation and knowledge of the past? People thought or think that there were quite good agricultural practices. People engaged in agriculture planted mangoes, corn, bananas, and upland rice. In fact, this is related to what they say as abundance within the landscape. People utilize the, 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 the landscape for agriculture and for survival purposes. People use local and organic fertilizers as far as their memory is concerned, and there, is no, there was no chemically processed pesticides. In simple terms, there was also what we call lesser pollution that's observed and settlement patterns was quite low, less. Residents utilize rivers and streams and creeks as sources of water. So generally people actually extract water for drinking, washing from river systems and, and creeks. People don't, don't practice before backyard poultry and piggeries. Although they domesticate animals, but it's caribals and cows, which are dominant as well as goats, but there was no backyard poultry and piggeries. Residents are for, uh, and for the rest, okay, care uh, for farm and the environment. Sorry for this, but there is an error in my presentation. What I would like to say is residents care for each other including the farm and the environment. Now, the other thing that I ask in the research is about knowledge in the present state of the cultural and environmental landscape. Now, this is quite striking because what was revealed in the past is actually the opposite of the present. For the, for the community, farmlands are dry and not fertile, not productive at present. The variety of tree species, plants, wild fruits are gone. And the hardwood gone, seeds are rare for these species. Birds and other species of insects and butterflies are lost, no food. Rivers, creeks are dry. Water is very limited. The species died. There is river and air pollution. Sand and rocks in rivers are gone. These are extracted for quarry, for commercial purposes. The bamboos, which are actually very, very abundant in the community, is still observed by the community as abundant, present. And in fact, people are actually profiting from it. Now, what are the associated practices in relation to these current situation? 
people use chemically processed fertilizers and pesticides. People are cutting of trees for fewer woods, which are actually uncontrolled and unlimited. For the community, people are indifferent. There's indifference, uh, the indifference of landowners and younger generation is quite observable. There is dislike in farm agriculture, which is actually difficult for the community and the older generation to take. There are more backyard vigorous and urban construction work. Why people love construction? Why people go for backyard vigorous? It's easy. And I think the, the work is not quite that hard compared to agriculture as far as the community is concerned. Uh, people thought that there is a responsible or there are responsible disposal of waste and pesticides, which actually cost damage and hazards to the river systems. For the community, people today no longer concerned with neighbor, the neighborhood. In simple terms, what has been admired before, okay, is totally, if not totally, is neglected in the present. So what are the aspirations of people and what people desires? The revitalization of agricultural landscape came first in the thought of the community. They want the agricultural landscape revitalized, including the variety and abundance of species and the fertility of the soil. They want the, the, they want the trees and the fruit bearing plants for birds, food chain and insects and butterflies to be revived. They wanted to save hardwood, seedlings, plant, and regulate cutting of woods for fuel. They also mentioned saving and cleaning the rivers, stream, uh, river systems, the streams for species to thrive. They also wanted to protect the water sources from poisonous pesticides and bucket piggeries. They also wanted to encourage more people to guard and save the environment and stop quarry of rocks and soil. They want to create laws and policies and ordinances and implement and seek partnership. They also want to revive local traditional practices that support the conservation of resources. And finally, they wanted to teach people the values of survival, control, and destructive practices. So what came out in this research as, as, as initiated by myself and the community is to create a model. So what came out is a model, a plan for community intervention programs. So let me show first, this is the workshop. Well, this was a workshop that we conducted that is participated by uh, about 80 participants. And these are taken from different sectors. There were farmers, there are construction workers, and there are students, and there are mothers and farmers and LGUs during the workshop. So what came out is the model. This is the model which actually concept was a product of conceptualization from the workshop. So I put them together and what came out is, are these things. Now there are three things that people were concerned about. One is environmental advocacy. And the way you see it, based on the data, there is a, a, a poverty elevation that comes next. And we have health and sanitation projects. Now, environmental advocacy is significant. This is attached to the cultural landscape. So what came out in the conceptualization was the training awareness and programs, which is actually suggested by the community. Uh, very specific is actually stewardship and organizing, also protecting and improving water sources, planting of endemic plant and tree species, and collaborative cleanup drives and rehab, uh, river rehabilitation programs. Now actually the community is currently today is in partnership with the University of San Carlos program on the cleanup drives 
uh, in river systems. And they are also linked with, with tree planting, which is actually to be improved what the community wants uh, based from the, the data and the, the suggestion of the community is to re revive back the endemic resources, which implies that the planting of tree species should be those that fit in the cultural landscape or community landscape. Now, what is problematic today? Tree planters are actually making their own agenda like just planting trees, and that is very problematic. Like interventionists, for example, from military, from schools, they have their own tree planting. And these uh, many times are not actually attuned with the cultural landscape of the community or the environmental landscape. And, uh, and I think this should be, as far as the community is concerned, it should be mitigated. And uh, I think in my observation also in the past uh, years, uh, about two years after this, the community actually is starting to control interventionists, like asking them and looking at the LGUs are very active in checking, for example, the programs and uh, the species that they plant, and even refuse to accept tree planters if the one planted within the landscape are not endemic and not fitted to revitalize the the landscape. Now, the other one is associated also, I believe, is the poverty alleviation. The community today is no longer productive, and there's a need for a secondary form of livelihood to be introduced. So the community actually suggested to have training for livelihood programs and improve agricultural production, which is actually very, very good. But what is something problematic is the current situation and the younger generation don't like to engage in agriculture. And this is one thing that I think and the community think about, that there should be training and there should be a retraining so that the agricultural landscape, which is their cultural landscape, can be managed properly. And uh, the alternative livelihood program for the meantime should be addressed. This is to address poverty uh, problems and like women, for example, and men, for example, youth and the elderly should be trained for alternate, alternative livelihood programs. The other one that came out from the research is the health and sanitation program. Food education, for example, is very important. Now, actually, what the community mentioned is the kind of nutrition problem that arise in the community. And I think the link between nutrition and agriculture is quite very strong. When people no longer plant, no longer eat the kind of food necessary uh, for the body, and their inability to produce, their inability to buy would, would mean malnutrition, would mean inadequacy for food supply. So what is necessary for the community today is to ed educate at the same time, not only agriculture, but food education. So that the kind of plant, okay, that they, they will have today will address uh, what is needed. I, I think this is linked with what, with what the, the community mentioned in their knowledge of the past, that there was abundance. That means people never, experience poverty and this is tantamount to that there was no problem much problem of health okay although there was problem of sanitation which is actually common in in all rural communities so there is a need to promote local and lead to food sources which is part of the alternative and this actually is the one that i suggested because this has been forgotten by the community Okay, after the, the brainstorming and after the processing of data, the only, only mention of production of food. So, and there was mention like local vegetables and, and other fruits which should be included in the planting. So uh, in my analysis, there's a need to promote local and indigenous food sources. Now there is one problematic dimension which largely affected the river systems, the waste management. So, 
when you look at, for example, the river systems, it's not only dry, but it, it became like the, the garbage area of the community. And uh, this is what we need. Uh, they're literally partnered with stewardship and organizing so that the waste management training must also be, be done within the community level. Now, there is a problem of securing toilets, for example. So I think the government has provided, and the, the small community has asked the city government to provide toilets. So as of the moment, uh, although it's not really that, that sustaining, but the city government has actually provided uh, toilets for, for households to, to, so for them to be able to have toilets and never go somewhere else. Now, uh, to, to in, in totality, the, the model actually is the one which has been um, which guide the community and guide interventionists. And this is, I hope, will be strongly supported by the community, whatever for whatever leadership, the change of leadership. Primarily because this is a product of, of brainstorming the community and the, the program like this would simply mean that we are actually addressing the cultural landscapes that people are desiring for and people are, are idealizing. The past was ideal and the present is problematic. So that if we are going to look into the, the model, uh, we, have, we are trying to address environment first to, to probably support poverty alleviation and we have to address health sanitation at the same time too so that these three what we call areas of interest in the community would help the uh, revitalized people's actions values and concerns for the community now to show a little of what i have this are uh, you might think it's too backward or and too but this is what the community is, even today. We have already private water sources in the city, but the community is still utilizing the traditional well systems. And this is, this actually poses hazards. The, the destruction of the cultural landscape, the destruction of the environmental landscape would actually affect the water sources. And uh, this is why this is the entire landscape that the community, and this is the highest elevation, one of the highest elevations in Tulupan. If you are going to look at this, completely devastated. And uh, I took this in summer, but actually the history of the place is, the, uh, there was, this is a place with timber, uh, a place with hardwood, and people utilize for agriculture in the planting of mangoes. So everywhere within the community, for example, to go into the higher elevation is actually completely devastated. There's no, there are no trees. So what was the solution? If uh, we go back to the program, for example, there's a suggestion there that we have to revitalize by planting the tree species because according to community, there are still rare species of hardwood that we need to save. So, uh, currently, I think uh, there was a need to to find another solution on, on the kind of tree planting that would come in. Um, what was found out is most of the tree planting activities done by schools are actually ineffective, considering that nobody would take care of them. So waste of money, waste of resources, and waste of trees it's never effective considering that no one took care of the, the tree plant, uh, the, the trees which are being planted. So there should be another thing. And to make this, I think, effective, I suggested uh, another intervention program like plant a tree program. This is to 
revitalize the landscape and to make sure that the trees which will be planted in the community will be taken care of. I do not know if the model has been, has, has been uh, okay, effective in other countries. I haven't read it. I'm sorry for that. But I am encouraging one department in the University of San Carlos to help the conservation by making a tree uh, um, uh, plant, uh, 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 sorry, uh, by making a program like Adopt a Tree Program. I, I conceptualize this that I will be writing more and maybe I will be consulting the community if this could be add on in the conservation of their, their landscapes. So if this is one, the other side, I think is uh, this one is uh, the other one on the right side is Luton, the one that I, I presented. And the rest here are actually in the lower elevation, the other one, although lower, lower com relatively lower compared to the rest. So you can imagine here how difficult it is to revitalize the landscape. But what is more important to the community is to have this revitalized. And the other one, so these are the activities, and I took this in summer, and it's another activity that, the, which is actually hazardous. Um, you have the fuel wood here, cutting of trees, and you have the dry river systems during summer. It's about 40, or oh, the, the, the heat is 40, uh, temperature is 40. So it's quite very, very hot. And what we started is another solution like managing local environment and cultural landscape risks by making it very participatory. That's why what I, I mentioned here is the adaptive program, which could be, I think, very participatory. But I think this will also need training so that people will be able to, to value and people will initiate and people will, will develop their own concern. It's, it's not for me as an interventionist of the area, but it's what the community really wants. So what, what, we, what I wanted and what the, the other institution wanted is to help these communities. Now, I will end up my presentation in this model by presenting the model. The environmental advocacy, I believe, is tantamount to advocating the conservation of the cultural landscape in the community. The environment and the culture are highly intertwined so that the destruction of the other would also mean a destruction of the other element. So both environment and culture survive. So this for me, I, I strongly argue that those memories and, and aspiration should be reconciled to create programs for community intervention. And this is, I believe, is very important in community landscape conservation. Whatever questions you have, I'm willing to entertain. Thank you very much. Ancora